Hi gang, Dan Bartlett here. Um, so I wanted to make a quick video based on the fact that we had this great comet 2019 Y4 Atlas and it was coming in and it was looking brighter than expected in March and then it started to disintegrate. Uh, perception was, hey, it's going to be a beauty. Well, now it's broken into four or five major pieces and it's it's fading. Well, at the same time, word got out that we had a new comet called Comet 2020 F8 Swan, S-W-A-N. And it was discovered in March and it was coming from the southern hemisphere. It's still an object there and it's moving its way north and it is at the moment brighter than it was supposed to be. So we've got a disintegrating comet and one coming northward. Well, we want to see both, but I wanted more information on Comet Swan. So, what can we find out? Well, I put together a quick video, very quick, it's an overview, showing you the effects, where it's going to be for us Northern Hemisphere people around 30, between 30 degrees and 45 degrees, Northern latitude. And I put together the video to show us what it'll look like in the morning sky, and what it'll look like in the evening sky. Where in position, how far away from the sun, where's it gonna go? This will be interesting. Also, I put together a little, I, I, I guess a simulation showing us where the moon will be. And the moon, as most of us know, isn't just a beautiful thing, but if you have a little bit of moonlight up, it will dramatically decrease our views, our imaging of the comet. So if we got it in the sky and it's 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 up there, it's going to affect it. So I put that also together. So how bright is this thing going to be? Right now, it's showing a remarkable tail, and it's right now naked eye visible. Naked eye! Hey, no telescope needed. Can you imagine what it would look like in binoculars? Right now, it's getting closer to us, and on about May 13th, it'll be at our closest point, about 45 million miles away. That's half the distance from us to the sun. Its closest approach to the sun will be, called perihelion, will be on May 27th. And we want to keep an eye on that. That's generally when a comet is hotter and, and cooked up and the tails generally grow. And it, it's always a good time to see what where it'll be and what it might look like there. Um, it, this is a swan song. <laughs> and we're, we're going to take a look again for the Northern Hemisphere and what our prospects will be. So bear with me. It's an overview. Don't look at this as, hey, I'm going to use this as my gospel and I'm going to find the comet using Dan Bartlett's Guide to Quan Comet Swan. Don't do that. Get your own planetary program. And uh, there we go. I will start off with a month's worth of animation of Comet Atlas YFR 2019. So it's kind of pretty to look at. Thank you. Stay with me.
So folks, in order to understand how this comet will appear, how high it's going to be, what's it going to be doing in the Northern Hemisphere, I called up this JPL small body database browser and I call up the orbital diagram of comet 2020 F8 Swan. Now you can see right now it's below the ecliptic or the solar system plane and therefore it's in the southern hemisphere at this moment. Now you can check the dates on the left hand side. I've called it May 1st. You can also check out the distance from the earth and from the sun and that again is in the bottom left hand corner. Now I'm going to play this forward step by step one day at a time and lo and behold about May 9th it's finally crossing the ecliptic and is moving up into the northern hemisphere. Yes. So again that's May 9th. It's going to be getting up there. Now also take a look at this white orbital path. I've moved it to May 13th. It is now above in the northern hemisphere and on May 13th it's closest to us about 0.55 astronomical units. So that's closest approach to us. So we're going to move it forward. It's getting higher and higher. Keep tracking the positions in the bottom left hand corner. And on May 27th, the comet reaches perihelion, closest point to the sun, a mere 0.433 AUs. Hey, to compare, Mercury's average is only 0.39 astronomical units. So it's just outside the orbit of Mercury. All right, we'll keep on playing. It's only in the northern side of the solar system plane for a short time. Let's take a look at what we really want to see. What's it going to look like in the northern hemisphere sky? Well, I've selected 37 degrees north latitude. Sounds like a good medium distance for much of us. And in Sky Safari Pro from the iPad, here's what I plotted. Morning sky first. You'll notice this thing is dang low. It's in heavy twilight. And remember, May 13th, closest approach to the Earth. Bingo. And look, it, it doesn't get further. It gets closer to the sun as the sun rises on the 27th, that's perihelion. I hope it's spectacular because that's bright twilight. Not very good in the morning. What about the evening sky? 37 degrees north latitude. And look at this. It looks a lot better. Into Perseus. Coming higher. Towards perihelion in between Auriga and Perseus, close to the star Capella. Nice. Not too bad. We got a shot. So how much of the sky does this comet span from the sun to the comet itself? Quick measurement, not too far. 25 degrees at best, close to perihelion. And the moon? How does it affect us? Well, this Moon Globe app on an iPad does a great job of showing the moon phases. Upper right hand corners and dates. It looks like we have a full moon on the 7th or 8th of May. And as we get to closest approach to the Earth, then we got a waning quarter moon. In the evening skies, we got the crescent. Let's go ahead and project those into Sky Safari and take a quick look how the moon appears at what dates. You might have to slow this down, obviously. All right, comet's off to the left, the moon's to the right. You can see it's getting towards full, or just past full. Closest approach to the Earth. Moon's turning into a waning crescent. And morning sky does have a beautiful appearance of the moon. But what about the evening sky? Look like looking like our best best apparition. Let's take a peek. New moon, good. Waxing crescent. 
Well, there you have it. It looks like it's going to be a great approach for the northern hemisphere in the evening skies. Moon does show a little bit of hindrance, and we do not know how bright this thing is going to get. It may throw surprises, and it may be spectacular, but it should give you a good overview of where to find it, where to look if you live in the northern hemisphere. Best for me to all of you.